I'm Crystal Churcher, and I want to welcome you to Voices for Care, the podcast where advocacy meets action in the Canadian child care sector. In every corner of our nation, families are searching for high-quality child care, a journey that has become more challenging than ever. Here, we dive into the stories, the struggles, and the successes of those who navigate the child care system, bringing to light the urgent need for expansion and improvement. From the bustling cities of Alberta to the quiet communities of the Maritimes, the demand for accessible, affordable, and high-quality childcare spaces is growing. Yet, as we stand at this crossroads, there's hope and a path forward. Through dialogue and dedication, change is possible. Each episode, we invite parents, educators, policymakers, and activists to share their insights and experiences. Together, we explore the complexities of the childcare sector, uncover innovative solutions, and celebrate the victories, no matter how small, on the journey to accessible care for all our children. So whether you're a parent feeling the pinch of the childcare crisis, a professional navigating the trenches of early childhood education, or simply someone who believes in the power of community to evoke change, Voices for Care is your platform. It's time to raise our voices, to share our stories, and to take action because every child deserves the best start in life and together we can make that vision a reality. Thank you for joining us. Let's embark on this journey together. So one of the things I wanted to touch on today was access and specifically access to affordable childcare spaces, access to $10 a day childcare spaces across the country. Um, One of the key key intentions of the $10 a day program of the Canada-wide Early Learning and Childcare Program is to create inclusive childcare. So childcare spaces that are accessible to Canadian families, these are affordable childcare spaces, accessible to Canadians regardless of income and regardless of location where they live. Um, If we find that the $10 a day childcare program is not meeting these intentions, not meeting these goals, it's really not creating childcare spaces that families can access. And without access to these $10 a day childcare spaces, well, as good intentioned as the program is, it's actually not doing anything for affordable childcare And it's really not meeting the intentions of supporting families, um, especially families that really need access to affordable childcare, access so they can join the workplace or so that they can go back to school, all of those things that we rely on childcare for. So one of the things I thought I would do is kind of go through some of the research and, you know, some of the stats, some of where we're at across the country right now for meeting this accessibility goal. In December of 2023, Stats Canada released a report on child care. And um, this is a public report. You can search it up online. It's easy to find, Stats Canada Child Care Report. Some of the key information on this report really works almost as a report card for the $10 a day child care program. A really good snapshot to show whether or not we're meeting the attentions of creating spaces, especially creating spaces at a rate that actually relieves the wait lists and meets the demand that we're seeing for childcare across the country. And if those spaces that are being created, those $10 a day childcare spaces are actually accessible for families. Because again, if you can't access them, they don't really exist and they don't really support your family. So some of the key numbers from the Stats Canada report are, you know, a really good reference that families are seeing a reduction in costs for childcare. What the report said was that on average, the reduction is $105 a month for families. That's amazing. And that really shows that we're meeting that affordability intention of this program. I know that Canadian families need more money in their pocket right now, more than ever. Um, Things are costing so much more, you know, groceries, heating, gas. Um, We're seeing increases everywhere, carbon tax, all of those things. So To have $105 extra in the pocket every month is a huge relief for Canadian families. So I I don't want to discount the fact that we're seeing that reduction and that this program is meeting that affordability goal. But accessibility. So some of the numbers from the Stats Canada report 
show that 56% of children, zero to five years old, uh, were in some form of licensed childcare. So that's, you know, daycare, preschool, day homes, licensed childcare centers, licensed childcare spaces. That's actually down from 60% in 2019 before this program rolled out. So while we've invested $30 billion as Canadians into this Canada-wide early learning and childcare program, we're actually seeing a 4% decrease in children in childcare spaces from 2019. One of the other highlights of this report is that 26% of children who are not in childcare are on a wait list in 2023. That's up 19% from 2022. So what we're seeing is more children, 26% of children are waiting for an access to a childcare space. They're waiting to be able to access these promises of affordable childcare. So while that shows that childcare has become more affordable, it's actually become less accessible. So it's a massive issue for Canadian families. I know if you have a child and you're searching for childcare, if you're pregnant and you're looking for childcare, you're probably well aware of the wait list in your area. It's growing and I'm actually surprised to see the numbers come in, families sharing their stories of sitting on wait lists for years, having operators, you know, close their wait list because there's just no point. They're, they're have, they have enough families for two years sitting there. Children aren't aging out of childcare like they used to. So while we've increased the demand by providing affordable childcare, we've also created more of a demand by keeping children in childcare longer because other programs that support them when they move into kindergarten or into school are more expensive now for families than full-time daycare. So we're seeing people leaving their children in daycare spaces instead of moving into kindergarten because kinder care, after school care, out of school care is often more expensive than a full-time daycare space. It's crazy. So one of the things I wanted to do was just kind of snapshot across the country what the demand is like, what the wait lists are like. And I mean, this is not an official research study or anything along those lines. What I did was just use a search engine, put in the province, so BC, childcare wait lists, or Ontario, childcare wait lists. And while I knew it was bad, I actually didn't know it was this bad. And you can do this research yourself. You'll be surprised, I think, if you did start plugging in your province with childcare wait lists to see the number of news stories, the stories from families, who are, the stories from operators who are just overwhelmed by demand and don't have spaces and sometimes can't even create spaces, can't expand because of the exclusion of private operators under this program. That's a whole nother episode, but let's go through. And BC, um, we'll start with BC. The Coalition of Childcare Advocates of BC says that while there are about 130,000 licensed childcare spaces in the province, 75% of children ages 0 to 12 aren't able to access them. So the $10 a day childcare program in BC is accessible for about 25% of families. In Alberta, we're seeing rural areas such as Grand Prairie, Fort McMurray, with wait lists of five, six, seven hundred families. Years long, most centers have closed them. A lot of centers don't even answer the phone or take tours anymore because there's just no space to put these families on these growing wait lists. In Saskatchewan, shockingly, 92% of pre-kindergarten children live in areas in postal codes or regions with more than three kids competing for each available childcare space. Meaning that the $10 a day program in Saskatchewan is accessible for about one third of the families. In Manitoba, there are almost 15,000 children on the province's wait list for licensed childcare space. Okay, we'll move on to Ontario. This one really shocked me. I knew it was bad in Ontario, but I had no idea. So Kawartha Lakes, one of several municipalities with a central wait list, children are now set to spend an average of 6.4 years waiting for a licensed affordable childcare space. That's up from an average of 3.7 years in early 2022 before Ontario joined the $10 a day program. So moving on to the region of Waterloo, 
there has been a 115% increase in the number of children on wait lists since the $10 a day program announcement with 9,200 kids now in the queue for an affordable childcare space. The Niagara region has seen a 76% increase in its wait list since March of 2022. Ottawa's waitlist has increased more than 41%. I will touch on Quebec, although I think it's important to recognize that Quebec is not participating in the Canada-wide Early Learning and Child Care Program. Quebec's child care system is seen by the federal government to have already met these intentions of affordable, accessible, inclusive, high-quality child care. Quebec's program is actually what has been used to model this program. So you know, the Quebec child care program is an example of success, and we have based our national program on that. So I'll just point out a little bit about what I found with Quebec. So in Quebec, the number of children waiting for a place has jumped by 3,724 in 2023 to a total of 37,260. I don't know if those numbers to me say success, but that's where Quebec is at right now for wait lists. In Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador, there are about 20,000 children under school age, um, but only 8,100 registered childcare spaces, meaning that about 40% of children can access the affordable childcare spaces in the province, leaving 60% without access. In New Brunswick, the provincial wait list currently includes over 3,300 children. Nova Scotia had 47% of young children under four living in child care deserts. Child care deserts are areas, um, regions, postal codes that have limited or no access to licensed child care spaces. So 40% of Nova Scotia is living in, in areas that have limited or no access to licensed child care. In PEI, the province's records show about 2,000 children are waiting for a licensed child care space. The territories right now, the average time to be able to access the child care space is about a year. So while the intention of the $10 a day program or, you know, the Canada wide early learning and child care program is to create more spaces to create high quality, accessible, affordable child care. I think that, you know, just looking at those numbers from a very brief internet search are, you know, clearly showing that this program is not accessible to the majority of Canadian families. We have invested $30 billion just federally. Each province has invested multiple millions of dollars to continue to make sure that this program can move forward. I think that, you know, as taxpayers, as Canadians, as parents, most of us, we should be asking ourselves whether this investment that we've made in child care is working. Is this program rolling out in a way that is going to be sustainable? Is it rolling out in a way that actually is working for Canadian families, that you can actually access one of these affordable childcare spaces you've paid for? I think the answer is no right now, just looking at these numbers, but you know, I will say make your own decisions. And I think that it's always good to do your own research. I think that whenever you're investing in anything, whether it's you know, a personal investment or a $30 billion national childcare program, we need to be looking at whether these programs are working, whether the investment is working and whether our money is being spent in a responsible way. You know, it, it's, it's a difficult time for Canadians right now and life is not very affordable. So, you know, we're, we're all wanting to make sure that our money stretches and, you know, works for us and makes Canada a better place for, for everybody else and for ourselves and for our children. And, Unfortunately, I, I think this program is falling short on what was promised to Canadians. Thank you for joining us on today's journey through the heart of Canada's childcare sector. We hope you found inspiration, insight, and a call to action that resonates with you. But our conversation doesn't end here. The quest for high quality childcare is ongoing and your voice is essential in this collective journey. Stay connected and continue to be part of this crucial dialogue by following Voices for Care on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe to receive updates on new episodes and share with friends and family to broaden our community of advocates. 
Together, we can make a difference in the lives of children and families across Canada. Don't forget to reach out via our social media channels with your thoughts, stories, and ideas for future episodes. Your input helps shape our mission and the future of childcare in our country. Until next time, keep raising your voice for care because every child deserves a bright start and every parent is entitled to the choice in care for their family. Thank you for listening and we'll see you on the next episode of Voices for Care.